panel constraints. Uh, so again, you know, where we are today, what we're looking at is we're keeping each triangular panel uh, less than four feet in width and with less than 10 degrees variation from equilateral. And we're trying to maintain kind of a, a consistent material grain with understanding that uh, this particular aluminum in the finish uh, that, we're, that we're looking to use um, that's really kind of a, a visual constraint to make sure everything flows really nicely. And I will say here with the constraints, we've looked at upwards of six to seven foot panels in, in other systems. Mm -hmm. uh, this four foot width constraint is really kind of a product of working with uh, with Zaner, with the fabricator that was working with us as a you know design assist through the, the better part of this process and using their proprietary ZEPS system. And so those four foot triangles uh, panels uh, work within that system. And so everything that you're seeing today is really kind of based on rationalizing to that four foot width. Okay. So to, to, to start this out, here's, here's a place that you can start to, uh, to see, you know, a, a shot from above. And um, you see the ellipse on that, that left image. Um, that's really kind of the zone of the ETFE where you see these kind of cutouts. Um, so there where your cursor is. And then again, down lower. Um, the first thing we did is we needed to kind of set out our primary structural system. And so working with Walter P. Moore, um, we began by doing this uh, portion of it is kind of a radial system that you can see is following that ellipse. Uh, but then since this isn't really a, a, a symmetrical shape, um, that uh, that radial primary structural grid system starts to kind of kind of slowly fall and evolve into uh, into different uh, configurations. Um, and so we get our primary structural system set, and then the next step, we need to come in with some of the joist framing and kind of understand, okay, um, how does that work layered upon this primary structural system? And then the far right image you're seeing there is, is really more of the tertiary structural framing that's actually going to carry the panel and the panel loads themselves. And so, as you can imagine, if we're, if we're trying to juggle being efficient uh, with the tonnage of steel, uh, working with seismic considerations, uh, and think about our schedule and our cost, um, it's, it's kind of a juggling act between how many individual pieces that we have that we're erecting, the size of those pieces, the spans that we're using, and then just the fabrication time. So there's you know, kind of many balls in the air that, uh, that we're juggling between the structural team, uh, the fabricator, and the design team. Okay, and just to be clear, as you said, um, the structure that you're seeing here, this is the, the structure that's supporting the panel, so it's sort of the substructure that is then attached to the primary structure here over on the left. Is that right? Correct. Exactly. Cool. Okay. And so the interesting thing where you could see that, if you want to flip back really quickly to that uh, that panel structure um, that, that you were notating there. Um, this guy? Yeah. Yeah, there. Um, so, so that's something that we have to think about because uh, even though this is a, a – uh, at least as of now, there are two layers of the skin system, one on the exterior and one on the interior. Hmm. Uh, we know that that is going to telegraph through because of the uh, the perforation ratio that we have. And so since we have kind of this, uh, this visually permeable skin system, we have to kind of keep in mind that this structure is not something that's going to be hidden, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a closed plenum. And so uh, that's something that has to work very, uh, very well with you. Okay, so there's essentially a sandwich here, and the top and, and bottom of the sandwich uh, are the uh, aluminum panels, and you're just saying since they're perforated, you're going to be able to see everything in between, because there's maybe not that much depth between them, plus you'll have sunlight coming through them, basically? Yes. Mm -hmm. 